Good morning, good afternoon, good evening to y'all. Welcome to the Mental House with me, your host, Khadija. Uh, this story captivated me in so, so many ways simply because I was there. I remembered it like it was yesterday. It was one of my very first... Um, it was one of my very first uh, outdoor concerts at one of the greatest festivals on the lake here in Milwaukee that kicks off the summer for a lot of uh, cities. Stop. And that is um, Summerfest. You know, Summerfest is a lot of memories. It's just a great uh, festival on the lake. How many of y'all have come down to Milwaukee and come down to our seven-day festival uh, called Summerfest? Uh, people have come from all over the world for the last 53 years. When we started this, um, I performed at Summerfest. I've also, uh, it, it was one of my very first, um, again, um, it was my very first stadium concert, okay? And the thing that really is, makes me go, wow, is the fact that how many years ago it was. It was 53 years ago today. No, Daisy. No. No. Now stop it. Summerfest, the largest music festival in America, has hosted tens of thousands of bands across its 53-year history. Wow. But there has never, there was never a performance quite like Sly and the Family Stones on July 26, 1970. Wow. A lot of y'all wasn't even born. If y'all was born, give me a shout out, okay? That's number one. If y'all remember Sly and the Family Stone, give me a shout out. Because a lot of y'all young people don't know what Sly and the Family Stone was all about. They were the earth, wind, and fire maybe of the 70s and 60s. Yeah, they were, they were the earth, wind, and fire of the 60s, I would say. Um, there was no other band like Sly. Get on up and dance to the music. Oh. Uh, and they also was featuring uh, Drake's uncle on bass, Larry Graham. Okay, anyway, there was never a performance quite like Stones less than a year after their fame appearance at Woodstock. The soul rock band drew more than 100,000 people to Milwaukee's lakefront and brought an already fraught situation to the brink of chaos by taking to the stage nearly an hour late. Yep, they had to drag him. I told you, I remember this. They had to carry him on stage, actually. It was by far the greatest crowd that ever gathered in the area to see a single performing group, uh, wrote Dean Jennison in his review from Milwaukee Sentinel 50 years later. That figure is only rivaled by Elton John uh, debacle at the Harley Davis 100th anniversary bash in 2003. Okay. That's the only thing that rivaled it was James Brown. Y'all really don't know how hot Sly was. Sly was just, woo -hoo -hoo. If Anyway, if they had all stood up, hell hands, and formed a circle, they could have surrounded Milwaukee, wrote Dominique. Paul North in his review um, of the, for the journal. And that's what it was called at that time. It was a morning newspaper called the Milwaukee Sentinel. And it was the evening paper called Milwaukee Journal. And so I would say long about 15 years ago, maybe 20, they combined it and it became the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel. Uh, wow, this was crazy. Um, as it uh, as it was, they were crammed into every available space with an earshot and eye strain of the Summerfest 70s band with barely enough elbow room to make a peace sign comfortable. 
Warren Wingrass, the only musician to perform at every Summerfest since the first one in 1968, said it was a show unlike any other. I know Warren, we call him Warren, but his name is Warren Wingrass. He's the uh, saxophone player. I think he's, what, what band does he run? Anyway, he's the house band for the Bucks now. City Life, I believe they call all these guys I played with. I uh, you know from just being a musician around the city. He played saxophone for local band, yeah, yesterday's children at the time, which opened for Sly and the Family Stone that night. All you could see was this mass of people, uh, just a mass of people. Summer Fest was not prepared for what was about to happen. It just wasn't. After falling 164000 in debt in 1969 with this multiple venue approach, uh, Summerfest relocated to a single site in 1970, a former Army Nike base on the lakefront. Millions have been pumped into what has become the Meyer Festival Park now. But that first year, there was no pavement. Sure it wasn't. A few stages, just five or so feet off the ground, and Wingrass said an inadequate number of porta potties uh, and foot vendors. Y'all, 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 y'all. As Wingrass recalls, Summerfest ran an ad campaign in Chicago to try to boost his attendance, and the festival organizers assembled an impressive roster of artists, including. James Brown, Chicago, Jose Feliciano, Sarah Vaughn, Bobby Sherman. <laughs> A lot of y'all don't know who the hell Bobby Sherman is. Ramsey Lewis, Sun Goddess, and Buddy Guy, whose brother uh, played at the uh, one of the clubs here every week. Uh, Buddy Guy, uh, what was his brother's name? Uh -huh. I can't think of his brother's name. Anyway, but Sly and his Family Stone was the festival's closing night act, and it was about it was it was about as big as you it could get. The band played Woodstock the previous summer and got plenty of screen time in Michael Watley's Woodstock film that was a blockbuster that spring. Uh, by early afternoon on July 26, a large crowd had gathered. North wrote for the journal, turning the scene into a strong junior echo of Woodstock phenomena. Yeah, it was like big. People were sprawled all over the 15-acre site, the Sentinel wrote. Marijuana smoke was so thick in the air that if they had been to shift the wind on a good share of the community of the Grand Raps would have been fucked up. They might have gotten stoned. Uh, <laughs> during yesterday's children opening act, the fences... Uh, they had to keep people away from the stage, four or five feet from the crowd. People just knocked them down. You could just see people's hands on the stage reaching out for stuff and everything. It was a little bit scary. North reported that six people fainted and had to be handed from person to person over the fence into the arms of police and off to the hospital. Babies and toddlers were also handed to safety. Jensen wrote, uh... To make matters worse, Sly was late. Apprehensive over his escort and getaway arrangements, reportedly Stone was so anxious about the fence in the north of the stage was going to be dismantled. Okay, I didn't know that was one of his problems. Um, Jensen reported that Stone only agreed to leave his suite of rooms at the Fister Hotel after Summerfest officials sent over three limousines for his transportation, <laughs> Wheatgrass said. Eventually, uh, Stone had to arrive on the site on a police boat because of the traffic. And I'm telling y'all, it was a night I'd never seen. And that's what made me more than that. And and, and watching Michael and them perform at uh, uh, Roosevelt was the biggest catalyst to me entering show business. I mean, I'd already been singing on the gospel scene for a long time, and, and and I just wanted to change. And Sly changed my life just listening to his music. Oh. 
Everybody is a star. Oh, yeah. Okay, let me stop. Uh, with the family stone running late, chil yesterday's children had to return to the stage for a bonus 45 minutes set, Wayne Grad said. After that second set, they were asked by the stage manager to play some more. I'm usually like, man, the torpedoes, full speed ahead. Uh, but after playing for such a long time on a hot and sticky night, we were dragging. I said, we need to have at least 10 minutes to get some water in us. During that break, Wingrass said, he ended up on yesterday's children's bus where someone in the slow st uh, family stones entourage was nursing a baby and children's assistant manager was rolling the biggest joints known to man. That's how it was on George Clinton's bus. George Clinton, let me give you a shout out. I love you, brother. Oh, my God. I ain't never party so hard that when I party with George Clinton, you talking about a bus that was so thick you could cut the van smoke with a knife. <laughs> he says Sly will not go on stage unless he sees 20 joints, Wingrass said. At least 20. North wrote that people were mainly peaceful, with police reporting just a few arrests for disorderly conduct and marijuana possessions. No fights. Man, it's... Nevertheless, the huge crowd rose and dipped in, worried uh, the, the masses of police. Now, just think, 100,000 people and very few incidents. Now you can't even have 10,000 people without having 10,000 fights. It's really sad that that I feel bad for the young people that 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 grew up in a world where all you do is fight. You don't know how to enjoy a concert or enjoy a, the music. And because for y'all, the the, um, the cherry or the icing on the cake, icing on the cake is the fight. That Lego, you grew up to the crescendo to the fight. No, no. Uh. Elected officials were worried that the loudspeakers would topple or someone would be electrocuted on the voltage box in front of the stage. In the change over from yesterday's children to Sly and the Family Stone, we grasped recalling seeing 20 people on each speaker stacked, crawling up there like monkeys. Local DJ uh, Rob Reitman of WTOS and OC White. Uh, rest in peace, my brother, O.C. White. O.C. White was married to Sylvia White, who I have also did stories on. Her brother was Daniel Bell, who was shot by the police. 